The CubeSail PyBox Mini 2 has two SATA slots inside and is the tiniest dual 2.5 inch NAS build I've seen using a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. I just got this one from CubeSail and they loaded it up with their software. The idea is you plug in a couple hard drives, turn on this box and connect it to CubeSail where you can manage the software on it, back it up and more. Out of the box, it includes Kubernetes, specifically MicroKates, but you can install any OS on it and use as much or as little of CubeSail as you want. If you want to just build a two-drive open media vault NAS, this thing's perfect for that. The hardware I have includes a front panel LCD, a Noctua PWM fan, and a Compute Module 4 built-in with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and 32 gigs of eMMC storage. CubeSale is launching a Kickstarter for the PyBox, and I'll link to it in the description. It starts with a trimmed down version with just the internal boards, so you can bring your own case and Pi, and that'll be a hundred bucks. But specs are boring. Let's tear this thing down, see what's inside, and put in two of these eight terabyte SSDs. So the box, this is a 3D printed box, and they're actually gonna make this case design available in case you want to buy one, print it on your own and do all that, because there's a cheaper option if you don't get the case and all the other parts with it. Uh, but this 3D printed box has two screws in the back, and let's get inside and see what's in here. One disadvantage of the 3D printed design is that uh, the screws go straight into the case, which means that they can strip pretty easily. And it looks like this one is a little bit stripped already. And I think that's it. Now I should be able to slide this off. There we go. Okay, and the fan is attached to the top, so I'll have to unplug that. Now this is kind of cool. It comes with a Noctua 5 volt PWM fan. And there's software on it, uh, on the Pi, that will make it so this actually works as a PWM fan. So it'll spin quieter if it doesn't need the extra cooling power. This design is uh, pretty cool. The, it looks like what they've done is they put the Pi onto kind of a daughter card uh, that uses a PCI Express uh, by four connector. It's not, this is not actually a PCI Express connector, but it's the same physical hardware and the Pi slots right into that. And the ingenious little case design holds that up here. It looks like it's supposed to be a little bit out to, to hold on these notches, but this, this particular 3D case is an early prototype, so that'll probably be fixed. But that's really cool, I, I like that. And uh, looking closely at this, this little daughter card or the main board for the Pi, uh, you have the Pi up here, of course. Um, they sent me a four gig uh, model with four gigs of RAM and 32 gigabytes of eMMC plus Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so this is not quite the best Pi you can get, but a pretty darn good one. Um, it also has full 40 pin GPIO, so you can uh, you could attach a Pi hat if you wanted to. I don't know if there's space in this case design, but you could probably build a custom case for it. It has a slot for your micro SD card if you have a light compute module, so that's a nice feature. Uh, you can use either kind. It has uh, a lot of IO on the back. There's HDMI 2.0, there's uh, Gigabit Ethernet, that's coming straight off the Pi's NIC. Uh, there's two USB 2.0 uh, ports, and there's also a header right here for more USB 2.0 ports. If you wanted to build a custom case, you could have two additional uh, USB 2.0 ports somewhere on it. And a lot of people talk about how the uh, they don't like that the these NASs that are based on the Pi CM4 all have USB 2. The difficulty is the USB uh, ports on the Pi itself are USB 2.0. The only reason the USB 3.0 ports exist on the Pi 4 is because the Pi 4 has a built-in VL, uh, VLI 805 USB 3 chip, which is off the PCI Express bus. If you wanted to do that on this board, this board uses that bus for the SATA connectors that are down here that we'll get to soon. If you wanted to use both, you'd have to add a PCI Express switch chip, which adds cost, adds to the bill of materials on the device, and it would uh, make it a little more complex and more expensive. So most boards aren't doing that. And USB 2.0 is fine for most things like input devices or uh, even flash drives and things if you're not looking for super high speed. Uh, and the thing is that on this board, it's much nicer to have that for these, these SATA connectors. So uh, looking down here, uh, there's, oh, there's a couple other things we missed here. Uh, it also has USB-C power input. So they sent me a three amp power supply. It's important to use a good power supply, otherwise your Pi is gonna start shutting itself down. Uh, so it has the USB-C input here, and this can also be used if you switch the switch, it says normal and RPi boot mode. You can switch it to RPi boot and plug this into your computer and flash that chip. So if you wanna put a new OS on the Pi, uh, or if you need to get access to the boot volume or things like that, you can do that. Uh, so that's what this switch is for, normal 
and RPI boot mode. Uh, so it's nice to have that built into this board. Some boards don't have that built in and you end up not being able to um, flash your, your compute module. You have to buy another board, like you'd have to buy uh, a Pi Tray Mini or some other board just to be able to flash the Pi and then you'd put it back in here. That's annoying. So I like to see that they put that right in here and have a switch with some text on it that shows you how to use it. I saw in a picture, let's see if it's here. Yeah, there's a little Easter egg, uh, happy hacking with a little smiley face. So on the rest of this box, this is the part where the, the card attaches to up here, the PCI Express uh, by four slot. And one interesting thing to note is at least in this little beta version, it uses a, I don't know what size this is. It uses a, a, little, a little hex screw instead of the Phillips screws that it used on the back of the box. Um, I don't think they're intentionally trying to avoid having people <laughs> disassemble these like someone like Apple would. Uh, and it looks like this little, this little daughter card comes off and it has two SATA ports and there's this little chip here and this is the chip, whoa, this is the little PCI Express chip that adapts the Pi's PCI Express bus to ASM 1061. It's a two port SATA 3 compatible bus that lets you put two SATA drives in. And this little backplane gives it power too. So you get power to these drives through the Pi so you don't have to power them separately like I did in some of my own NAS builds. And flipping it over, there's this little, this little screen kind of dangling off. It looks like there's actually a sticker for it to stick it on the board, but it was never stuck on there. So I'm, I wonder if, uh, if you get the final build, if that'll be stuck on so it's a little more rigid. It does fit into this case. There's a little recessed cutout for it as well as all these little LEDs that are here on the front connected by GPIO. The cool thing about the screen is there's custom software running that will allow the screen to display things like CPU usage, memory usage, network usage, and you can customize it as much as you want. So let's start putting this back together and get some drives in it. The way that they mount these drives is pretty ingenious. There's two little notches on each side of these little holders. And as far as I can tell, you just slot these in. So I'm gonna try doing that. It's a little bit of a tight fit. So I'll pull this out a tiny bit and I believe that's in. So there's one eight terabyte hard drive. These are Samsung's 870 QVO eight terabyte SSDs. Don't ask how much they cost. If you have to ask, it's too much. So I got two drives and then I'll put the Pi in the top. Okay. And then I'll get the fan on. Now the metal case should fit together a little more snugly. This plastic case I've taken apart a couple times and when you get it back in the, uh, the IO on the back you can see has very tight tolerances. So, okay, I think we got it. So I'll get these two Phillips screws in. This one is a little bit stripped so it just kind of goes in there and doesn't hold tight. All right, so we got a little bit we got a little bit of a panel gap there, but um, that's okay. If I wanted to sit here and, and massage it a little more, I could probably get that out. They shipped me this three amp power supply. You can also use a Ras Raspberry Pi Foundation official USB-C power supply. The key is to make sure it's a three amp power supply. There are a lot that are 2.5 amp or 2.4 amp, and that's just not gonna be enough for powering the Pi and these uh, SSDs. And this power supply comes with a little power switch, so I don't know if that's on or off. <laughs> we'll see when we plug it in. And I'll plug it into the USB-C connector here. Okay, it's off right now. And I need network. And we'll see what happens when I turn this on. The fan is relatively loud at full blast, but I think once, yeah, you can hear, once the, once the uh, PWM kicked in, it turned off the fan because it doesn't need it right now. And it looks like things are working. There are activity LEDs inside on the board itself, but there's also some, some uh, LEDs here that are controlled by GPIO. Out of the box, they come with different options. Looks like also the silk screen on here. <laughs> it has the power. Now this is supposed to come up, it, it should have CubeSale and, and everything installed on it already. So we'll see. I'll take a look on the network and see if I can find it. All right, so after it booted up, it took a minute or two, uh, but this little screen came on and it looks like it shows CPU usage, memory usage, uh, disk usage, but that looks like it's using the, the disk, the EMMC space on the Pi itself. And then it gives you IP addresses. I assume that these are internal IP addresses for Kubernetes because 
uh, my network is a 10.0.100 network. And then uh, these these LEDs haven't really come on, so I'm guessing that these are things that in software they'll be they'll be working on making them work correctly. Uh, this again, this is a prototype unit. I think one of the first ones that they built. Um, but that's pretty cool, and, and uh, I'll be looking into how to customize this. And you can see the CPU usage goes up and down between 5 to 20 percent. Uh, Kubernetes is not super lightweight, but this is micro Kates running on here. And if we go over to the computer, um, I scanned my network with my network scanner tool and found that this has the host name Pybox. So I can say ssh pybox.local and... Uh, Oh, ssh pi at pybox.local. So now we're in the box and I can say uh, top to see what's going on. Uh, it looks like it has a bunch of Kubernetes stuff running. Uh, Cube API server is always going to be near the top here because uh, it just uses a lot, of, a lot of resources to run Kubernetes. Um, but if I run uh, micro kates uh, cube, cubicuddle with micro kates, you have to use it, uh, its version of kubectl to interact with the cluster easily. You can configure a, a, a normal version of it too. And if you wanted to learn more about Kubernetes and what it is, this video is not about Kubernetes or microcates or anything like that. I have a whole series called Kubernetes 101 that I did for free on YouTube, so go check that out. So microcates kubectl uh, get pods, and I can see what's running on here. And it looks like it's running a pod called Pybox Display, which is the pod that's running the display on the front. I can integrate this cluster directly with KubeSail if I want, um, apparently, and get it to show up on this KubeSail clusters dashboard. Um, I probably won't get too deep into what KubeSail is and how it works in this particular video, but just for a quick overview, you would add your cluster here and it would show up once it connects. Um, you might have to configure something on the cluster itself. And then there would be templates that you could install onto the cluster right here just with, by clicking a button. You could put Minecraft server on it. Uh, you could put MySQL for a database, uh, WordPress here. There's, there's probably going to be more and more of these for other applications. If you wanted to host your own GitHub instance, like something like GitHub, there's Gidea here for hosting that. Uh, so already they have all these things. So this is pre-launch. So um, I'm guessing that this will have a lot more things for things like media. Right now there's Plex, but you could also put Jellyfin on there probably at some point. Um, whatever software that you'd normally run on a NAS or on a little home server, you could probably run through here. Uh, but the thing I'm most interested in is I want to see uh, the hard drives and see what's on them, how, how to get them set up. So I'm going to say lsblk and see what's up. And it looks like there's only one here. We might have to take it apart and try some other disks and see if there's a problem on the unit or if there's a problem, hopefully not, with one of my eight terabyte SSDs, because if there's a problem with the SSD, that's not gonna be very fun for me, because those things cost a lot of money. I have some other SSDs that I can try plugging in, and these I know were working in the last build that I did. I haven't tried these, these Samsung SSDs, so if they don't work, that could be, could be a dead on arrival or something like that, which would really stink. All right, let's switch out these drives. All right, let's put these guys in. Okay, so it's back up, and let's say lsblk. So we have SDA here. It looks like only one of the two drives seems to be listed. So I wonder if there's an issue with the second port. Um, I'm going to have to take a look at this. All right, so I did some old-fashioned debugging by shutting it down, changing the port, powering it up, and with a couple different drives, I've confirmed that the top port on this particular prototype unit seems to be dead. Uh, if I plug any of these drives into the bottom SATA port, they work fine. If you plug it in at the top, it's dead. So um, unfortunately for my prototype unit, I can only get one SSD out of the two plugged in. So I can't do things like RAID 1 or RAID 0 with two drives and, and test that out. Um, uh, but we have enough to be able to test the speeds with one disk and also set that disk up so that Kubernetes can use it for its storage. So I decided to go ahead and just do one of the 8 terabyte Samsung drives for now. Uh, since the other slot's not working. So I'm going to put this one aside. And don't worry, you will see those 8 terabyte SSDs make a comeback. Um, and I, I, I hope that I can get a new backplane so I can get this working with both, both SSDs because I want to put them into a RAID 1 so I have an 8 terabyte uh, redundant array of disks. 
so that it's a little more safe. Because right now, if I just have one SSD running and it blows up, then assuming I have a backup, I could restore from it, but I, I couldn't have it keep running after that drive goes away. Um, KubeSale has some documentation, and this is preliminary documentation. There will be a lot more coming, as far as I can tell, about uh, setting up your Pi. If you buy their full kit with the hard drives and everything installed, it should have all this stuff done for you. Um, but since I'm putting in an SSD here, you can do these steps to get the SSD working with Kubernetes. And um, there's a few different ways to do it, but uh, th this is a pretty simple way. So I'm going to say LSBLK, LSBLK, and check. So this device is SDA. It's the 8 terabyte or 7.3 terabytes uh, disk. And I'm going to uh, wipe it with parted. So I'm going to do that. It should format it. And then I'm going to uh, create a Kubernetes data volume on that, that partition. So while it's formatting, you can see, so I, I guess this is attached to the SATA bus, uh, disk activity on the SATA drives, because the SATA drives are being formatted and it's doing a lot of activity on them, of course. So the next step is, uh, making a partition. I was told to actually mount this into microcates. So I'm going to look in var snap. So there's already a microcates directory. So it looks like there's some stuff in here already. So the idea with this is that you'd put all of Kubernetes storage onto the SSD so that the SSD can contain all of your volumes for things like if you wanted to run Nextcloud or some other application like that and store data, it would all be on the SSD and not on the Pi's internal storage. It's also good because it can store things like logs and things from Prometheus and other applications on the SSD, which is much better suited for writing lots and lots of data. But if you are just going to install um, OMV or some other application on here, or just run it as your own little custom build, you can do all this without using Kubernetes at all. And there are examples on the, uh, the KubeSale website uh, for how to do all the things individually, which is awesome. Everything is open source, which I love about it. You can basically buy this and not use KubeSale at all if you didn't want to. You could just use it as a Pi NAS with two hard drives. Another cool thing that's going to happen is they're, they're planning on building a 3.5 inch version uh, with up to five hard drives. So you could have a much larger NAS with much larger hard drives. From what I've seen here, the hardware design is awesome. And the only reason that the one of the two slots is not working is because it's a prototype, probably hand soldered and hand put together. Um, and the, the production version is going to be coming soon. I talked to them about the uh, Kickstarter. They're planning on having a few different options available. There will be bare boards where it doesn't come with a case, doesn't come with a fan. Um, I, I don't remember if it comes with a power supply or not, but it'll be 50 bucks for the first 50 people. But after that, it'll be $100 for the whole package without the case and without the fan and without the pie. And then there will be a premium bundle that has everything, basically everything that's here except for an 8 gig compute module 4. So that's kind of cool. It's kind of hard to find those anyways. Uh, it also will have a Wi-Fi antenna, the display that I have here, uh, and the official Pi power supply. And that premium bundle with everything basically out of the box except for the hard drive is 250 bucks. Um, then they'll have a plug and play bundle that also has two one terabyte crucial SSDs. So something like this. I think these are two terabyte, but it'll come with two one terabyte SSDs. And then supposedly there's a, a founder's edition or something, some very, very nice bundle that has everything you could imagine, two eight terabyte SSDs, extra support, two years of pro premium plan, I, all these different things. If you want to find out more about this Pi Box Mini 2, uh, or KubeSale itself, there's a Discord, which is linked in the description. It'll be on Kickstarter starting probably before this video comes out, but if not, I'll put the link below to find out more. And um, it's really cool because this is one of the first NAS devices that I found for uh, the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 that's like a full built enclosure with everything that you need to go. And it's kind of the fulfillment of the vision that I had a, about a year or so ago when I was starting thinking like the CM4 is perfect for NASes. Look at this two hard drives in here. You could put 16 terabytes of storage inside this thing. There's a few others coming. Like I, I've hinted on the channel that I'll be reviewing the Radsa Taco board, which has five SSDs. I'm hoping to do that review in the next month or so. So make sure you subscribe to see it. So to sum up, this is a really cool hardware kit. I'm excited about it. I think the price is pretty good for it. 
especially if you get one of the bundles with the Compute Module 4 with 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, the unit that I have currently only has one working SSD, so I don't want to do benchmarks on it yet. But I'll cut in right here to mention that after debugging the broken port, I emailed CubeSale and they immediately sent me a replacement backplane. They said the first few prototypes they made had to use SATA chips from an older stock because of the chip shortage, and I must have just gotten the unlucky broken one. The new board works great, so I put the two 8TB drives in RAID 1 and ran some FIO benchmarks on them. I was able to get 374 megabytes per second sequential writes on a single drive and 398 megabytes per second in RAID 1. For random 4K reads, which are a more real world traffic pattern for running things like Kubernetes, I got 28.4 megabytes per second at 6,934 IOPS. These stats aren't amazing compared to a high powered modern desktop, but it's a heck of a lot faster than the maximum throughput you can get with a micro SD card or the built-in EMMC on the compute module. And if you were just running this as a NAS, the speed won't bottleneck the LAN port, which can copy through a maximum of around 120 megabytes per second. Anyways, I'm so happy to see the Pybox Mini 2 finally come out, and I can't wait to share some of these other boards. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.